I, I think having friends who die, getting older, getting closer toward the end of life tests people's faith and they also, it also tests people's atheism. It sounds like your your atheism is staying strong. <laughs> is what? Staying strong. <laughs> yes. It, it, I'm not unhappy about becoming old. I'm not unhappy about what must be. It makes me cry only when I see my friends go before me and life gets is emptied. I don't believe in an afterlife, but I still fully <laughs> expect to see my brother again. And it's like a dream life. I am reading a biography of Samuel Palmer, which was written by a woman in England. I can't remember her name. And it's sort of how I feel now when he was just beginning to gain his strength as a creative man and beginning to see nature. But he believed in God, you see, and he believed in heaven, and he believed in hell. Goodness gracious, that must have made life much easier. It's harder for us non-believers, but you know, there's something I'm finding out as I'm aging, that I am in love with the world. As I look right now, as we speak together out by window in my studio, and I see my trees, my beautiful, beautiful maples that are hundreds of years old, that they're, they're beautiful. And you see, I can see how beautiful they are. I can take time to see how beautiful they are. It is a blessing to get old. It is a blessing to find the time to do the things, to read the books, to listen to the music. You know, I, I don't think I'm rationalizing anything. I really don't. Since this is all inevitable, and I have no control over it. I have nothing but praise now, really, for my life. I, I, I'm not unhappy. I cry a lot because I miss people. I cry a lot because they die and I can't stop them. They leave me, and I love them more. But I have my young people here, four of them, who are studying, and they look at me as somebody who knows everything of four kids. Oh, God, there are so many beautiful things in the world which I will have to leave when I die, but I'm ready I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, listen. You know, I yeah. have to tell you something. Go ahead. You are the only person I have ever dealt with in terms of being interviewed or talking to who brings this out in me. There is something very unique and special in you, which I so trust. When I heard that you were going to interview me or that you wanted to, I was really, really well, I'm really glad we got the chance to speak, because when I heard you had a book coming out, I thought, what a good excuse <laughs> <laughs> well, to call up Maurice Sendak and have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we always do, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. It's what we've always done. It is. Thank God we're still around to do it. Yes. And I'll, almost certainly I'll go before you go, <laughs> so I won't have to miss you. Oh, God, what a... <laughs> And, and I don't know whether I'll do another book or not. I might. It doesn't matter. I'm a happy old man. But I will cry my way all the way to the grave. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you have a new book. I'm really glad we had a chance to talk. I am, too. And I wish you all good things. I wish you all good things. Live your life. Live your life. Live your life. <laughs>